In this video, we're going to be looking at finding roots of complex numbers. But let's first look back at our real number system. If I'm working in R, and I say to you, what is, if x squared is equal to 4, what's the value of x? You're going to tell me it's plus or minus 2. If I say to you, x squared is equal to minus 4, what is x? You're going to tell me there's no solution in R for x. If I tell you x cubed is equal to 8, you're going to say to me, real numbers, x is equal to 2. So this is all that we, or a lot that we know about solving equations in real numbers system. So now let us look at how to solve similar equations in complex numbers. Now I already want to tell you, the first one will be pretty similar. But the second one, I'm going to get solutions in the complex numbers. And this third example I'm going to get this answer, but two additional answers. I'm going to get three complex numbers that I can cube to get eight. So let's get started. Here's our formula that we're going to use. We're not going to prove it, but our formula says that if R is, Z is in polar form, R cis theta, then Z to the power 1 over N has N distinct solutions, and this is what they look like. We're going to come back to look at this, and my K values are from 0 to N minus 1, and we're going to look at why we stopped. So let's look at a real example and we'll look back at these, this formula. So if I've got 1 plus i to the power 1 over 5, and that's equal to some complex number w, it's similarly to say w to the power 5 is 1 plus i. Those two things mean the same thing. doesn't matter how it's represented. We want to get to w. We want all the options for w. Now this formula tells me there are five different solutions. It's got n different solutions. So I've got five different solutions here and that's what they look like. But first I need to have this in polar form. But we've already seen 1 plus i. You can change it to polar form if you don't remember what it looks like. But 1 plus i is root 2 cis pi over 4. That is what it looks like in polar form. So let's look at our possible solutions. My formula tells me wk is my r value to the power or the kth root. Here we've got the nth root of r. Now, I've already got a root there. Another root gets it a bit messy, so I'm just going to say 1 to the, one over 5. We'll tidy that up shortly. Sis, my angle is pi over 4, but now it's pi over 4 plus k times 2 pi over this n value, which is 5. And my k values goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then it says stop there, no more. And we're going to see why we want to stop there. So let's get started. We will generate solutions W0, W1, W2, W3, and W4. We will generate four solutions. And I'm not going to do it, but you can take each of those solutions and see if you take that number and you raise it to the power of 5, do you get back to 1 plus i? You can do that test, but it should work. So it's root 2 to the power 1 over 5, so that's 2 to the power 1 over 10. Or the tenth root of 2. Either representation is fine. Sis. Now k is naught, so I've got pi over 20. 2 to the power 1 over 10. Sis. K is 1, so I've got pi over 4 plus 2 pi divided by 5. That should get you to 9 pi over 20. Now k is 2. It's still 2 to the power 1 over 10. Sis. K is 2. Substitute it into the formula, so I've got pi over 4 plus 2 times 2 pi, so plus 4 pi divided by 20. That should get you to 17 pi over 20. When k is equal to 3, and this is becoming tedious, we're doing the same thing over and over again, but that's nice. Sometimes 2. k is equal to 3, so pi over 4 plus 6k over 5 gets us to 25 pi over 20. And the last one, 2 to the power 1 over 10, sys k is equal to 4, so that gets us to 33 pi over 20. So all of these fall between 0 and 2 pi. So these are five different solutions, and you can plot them on the argon plane and see what do you notice about how they are spaced. Take a look at if you see a pattern with the differences, distances between those. But let us say I wanted to calculate W5. I don't necessarily believe there's only five solutions. I want to calculate the sixth solution. That will then be 2 to the power 1 over 10. Sis. I've got k is now equal to 5. So it's power 4 plus 10 
over 5, so that'll get me to 41 pi over 20. So I'm going to plot that and see where that is. Well, 41 over 20 pi is a 2 pi plus 1 over 20. So it's one way around and then 1 over 20. So it ends here somewhere. That's where 41 pi over 20 is terminal side is. But now please notice that ends the same place as the angle pi over 20. And this first solution here, W naught, is 2 to the power 1 over 10, cis pi over 20. So W0 and W5 are exactly the same. So when I calculate W6, I'm just going to get W1 again. So it goes in a circle and it repeats itself. So it's only necessary to calculate those five solutions. It makes no sense to calculate more. They will just give us the same value. So that's why we've got those number of solutions. All right. Let's go to the next one, minus 4 to the power of half. Now we know there's no real solution to this, but let's use the formula. I'll show you there's a quicker way to get to this answer because this is a very straightforward one. But let's use the formula to see if it supports what we're thinking. Well, let's first see what we're thinking. Minus 4 to the power of half, if I want the square root of minus 4, that's just the square root of 4 times minus 1, which gets us to i. This one gets me to i, square root of 4 is plus or minus 2, because we're looking at them, sorry, if we think of it in terms of real numbers. So then we get 2 plus or minus 2i. So let's see if our formula gets us there too. So this is the same if w squared is equal to minus 4. I prefer to have it in this format, but that's saying w squared, if this is equal to w, then w squared is minus 4. So let's take a look. Minus 4 I can write. I know that is on over here. So that is 4 cis pi. So my solutions, w, k, and there's only two of them, is 4 to the power of half, or the square root of 4, times cis of pi plus k times 2 pi over 2 where k is naught and 1. So I've got for w naught and w1, w naught is 2 cis, well, I've got pi over 2, and w1 is 2 cis, k is 1, so it's 3 pi over 2. And those, if you had to draw them, the one is over here and the one is over here. It's 2i and minus 2i. So that's where that gets us. So that's the same as what we thought it would be. All right, so the last one. Z to the power 3 is equal to 8. If we look at Z to the power 3 equal to 8, we saw in real numbers I get the number 2 out as a solution. But I said, oh, there's three possible solutions. So one of the numbers should be 2, but the other two are complex numbers. So let's take a look. 8 we can write as the complex number. 8 cis 0. That's a nice one. So our Solutions, z, k, all take of the form 8 to the power 1 over 3, cis 0 plus k times 2 pi divided by 3, where k is equal to 0, 1, and 2. So z naught is 8 to the power 1 over 3, cis naught. z1 is 8 to the power 1 over 3, cis k is 1 now, so I've got K is 1, so I've got 2 pi over 3. And Z2 is 8 to the power 1 over 3. Cis of K is 2 now, so it's 4 pi over 3. And there we go. Those are the possible solutions. Now, 8 to the power 1 over 3, we know is 2, so that's 2 cis 0, which you know is over here on the real number line, and it's just the value 2. So that's the real solution that we got. But here are the additional complex numbers that are solutions to that equation. And you can substitute it in and check that you get 8 out. So that's where we're going to stop with these roots of complex numbers.